And here we have Fidel Gonzalez. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. Um, thank you for having me in it your podcast. It is an honor to have you here. And uh, we have known each other uh, since 1989. So that, what is it, like 34 years or something like that? Yes. So probably yeah. you and I, when we first met, we, we didn't have gray hair. On the beard, on the beard. Oh, oh. And I, I, actually, I had hair. <laughs> okay, that's another trick. You had hair, and uh, I didn't have it on the beard. So, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I'm really, I was eager to have you on because of the incredible work you do. Not only recently, I can go back to the mid '90s, and I'll I'll tell that story a little bit. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Introduce yourself to the audience. Who is Fidel Gonzalez? Hi, um, my name is Fidel Gonzalez. Uh, I'm a Cuban refugee. I came to this country in 1980 in a wheelchair. I, I am in a wheelchair because I had an accident back in Cuba uh, when I was 15 years old. So when Mariel left opens uh, and President Carter invited us uh, to come here to the United States, uh, my uncle who lived in Miami at the time um, went to uh, uh, the port of Mariel and hey, right. here I am. I, I came here with my mom, my sisters, uh, and my brother-in-law and my sister and brother-in-law, two sisters and two brother-in-law, they, they went their separate way. I stayed with my mom. Uh, I kind of always wanted to be with my mom because when I was down because of my accident, yep. she was there. Uh, actually, she still uh, support me. <laughs> in moral support in a sense, and she's always worried about me. Um, so my mom stopped working and, you know, I had to find a way to repay her uh, because, I don't know, I'm, I'm a classical old timer with my my mind is set up in how I grew up, you know, a man is the one who takes care of the woman, not the other way around. So I, I started looking for a place so I can uh, generate some income so my mom stopped working. So I, I tried some old, you know, jobs, different type of jobs. I was like a cashier, a hostess. And I was not making good on that. Uh, so I decided to go to a technical school where I was working. And I became a computer programmer in eight months. So now I had some experience with jobs where they, they can let you go right. in a flash. Because, you know. They, they hire a better person who walks and more able. So I say, ah, uh, I need some something more stable. So the HR building for the county at the time was 140 West Flagler. And I used to go there every single Friday to apply. The guy even wow. knew me after three months. It took me a year before... Uh, I was set up to an interview for the Department of Correction. This is uh, in 1987. I said, we have a position for somebody bilingual. And he's answering the phone information, giving uh, the people who get arrested, the family members, the information about the bond amount and stuff like that. So I said, yeah, I take it. And that's how I got my, my foot on the door in the Department of Correction. After that, you know, I I went keep doing my other thing. I, I used to help a friend 
doing uh, videos of the wedding and then editing the video. I had an old computer for video editing. It was an Amiga computer. I don't know if you heard about Commodore, Commodore Amiga. Yeah. And the video platform uh, they used to, to edit video was uh, called the Video Tosca. Wow. So I, I, I started training on that with my friend and stuff like that, doing video. I was working corrections. Uh, and one time, I, I know, a position opened up within correction that pay better salary. So that's how I moved to pretrial services. And pretrial services was there until I retired back in 2018. Uh, you know, correction became too political and uh, I had it with that. You know, you, you, you can tell who was who. Yes. So um, basically, during correction, I say, I, I'm going to get my a degree. I, I'm going to go to the university and get a degree. And that was uh, in the beginning, in the mid-90s. So I applied for, uh, I mean, I went and did my application to go to Miami Day College. And while I was going to Miami Day College, the access department noticed my videos. And they say, we need somebody like you to do some videos. And I say, yeah, I'm here. They hired me and I did corrections at Miami Day College. A correction for 32 years at Miami Day College for 15 years. So I, you know, my art, I graduated from um, actually belongs to the uh, University of Florida, but it is New World School of the Art, which is in downtown Miami. Over there, uh, I had a degree on um, electronic intermediate, which means photograph, video, um, art installations. Uh, Let me... Let me ask oh. you this question. Now, you, you started in like 87 doing computers, and that's the beginning of computers. So yeah, there yeah, was a exactly. little bit of risk for you in that. That could have taken off or it could not have. But now as you're going into videoing, this is something a little bit more, I'm assuming, more stable for you. Oh yes, uh, the the thing is, I, I can program. I can still right. program SQL because uh, uh, I'm a person that when I find um, something that I like and I learn the the basics, I t I try to grow on my knowledge, and you know, I I use read about it, do the changes. Different languages came along. Back then, when I started computer, it was COBOL, Pascal, RPG2, uh, basics. Those four languages. And now they have C++, uh, SQL to, to do queries, uh, uh, Python to do the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino board to do robotic stuff. Uh, I have the knowledge. I can read the code. I know what uh, what to do. I'm not into robotic or anything because my thing is more about life, which is photography and videos and painting. I'm going to explain to you painting. When I was in um, New World School of the Art, uh, we all have to learn about colors. And so we, we did paintings. We didn't, de, we didn't do paintings like, uh, you know, Raphael, Michelangelo, and stuff like that. But it was more like conceptual paintings, you know, mixing the colors and creating abstract art mm -hmm. and, you know, modern art and, and stuff like that. And I remember uh, there was a class about that 
open your creativity. And it was an installation about what you do every day. You know, so some people, some students, uh, the installation, they, they shower in the classroom. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because hey, that's the way. That's what I do every day. You know, I'll brush the trees. So my teacher say, "You too classic. You draw well. You you paint well. You photograph well. But I want you to do something different. I don't want you not nothing to do about you know real art. Something conceptual. Say, okay, I got it. I got it. I I, I can tell you what I'm going to do every day." So I was prepared for the show. I put a basket. I, inside the basket, I put a, one of those uh, Italian tabletop, uh, red and white square uh, tabletop. And I had a, a little uh, storage for my food. And I put a glass, I put water. I took a, a raw steak. Out of the, the, the storage, I put it on my plate. I start eating it a raw steak full of blood. And guess what? All those uh, vegetarian <laughs> kids in the class I start puking. <laughs> my teacher said, hey, man, you got an idea here. Yeah, move on. <laughs> I'm sure we weren't expecting this. Well, no, I don't know. So, exactly. So I I started working in pre-trial, but my creative part was uh, more like in Miami Dade College, you know. And I, I did a couple of jobs for uh, back then when computer was not like nothing like mm -hmm. it is now. Nothing. I mean, today kids have. I mean, computer. Everything. Every program has a uh, artificial intelligence built in. And stuff like that. No, back then, yeah, it was your eyes, and you know your creativity, yeah. and how to solve problem, basically. So I did a couple of uh, uh, photo to paint back then, and they came out all right. I, I can tell you, I can do some photo painting right now, and. You know, with artificial intelligence, I can improve yeah. on it. It's not the artificial intelligence is going to do it itself and that's it. No, 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 no. You have to improve on it. You know? Right. There's something that computer will never do, like a person. Yeah, you can. Uh, artificial intelligence could be used for good or for bad. Hopefully, it's for good. Yeah. Um, I, I totally agree, you know. Uh, so the next level of creativity is not letting the computer create it. And that's one thing that I don't like about people doing it. It's just they let the computer create it and they claim it is theirs. And it's not. It's really not, you know. You can create the basic on it and build on it, and it's yours. But, you know, actually, uh, and that's how I use nowadays uh, artificial intelligence, just to improve on my idea, to, to create like a base, and then I, I start adding up all the elements that it needs. So, so that basically is... Uh, my life until I retired from corrections in Miami Day College. Now, I, I, I want to add, it was probably sometime in the mid-90s, there was uh, an employee that worked with us. I'm not, I'm not going to mention her whole name, but her name was Elise, her first name. And you restored a photograph for her that was her parents, I believe. And then you brought it to work. And she was so emotional because, I mean, she must have had this photo for so many years uh, in the poor condition it was in. And you restored it. And she had me, oh, can you put this away in the locker? Because I want to show, you know, the rest of my coworkers that may have not been there that day. And 
you really brought uh, a sense of joy back to her life on that photograph. There's where I first found out that this was another one of your talents. I knew you since 89. I knew you did a lot of computer programming, which was a new thing back then in the in the late 80s. But you would always be sitting back there in the computer. But I didn't know about that. How did you get involved in that? Okay, basically, um, that was my talent when I was hired by Correction. I was going to go into video production way before Corrections. That was one of my side jobs that I did with my friend while I was working on it. And I liked it. So I, uh, my first photography camera I had when I was uh, 11 years old, it was a Russian camera called Zenith. Okay. Seni. No, now Seni is the, 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 the American brand. Seni, Seni, with a Z. It was a Russian camera, uh, film camera, and that was my first experimentation with photography. Um, but basically, uh, art was the first thing on, on my my taste. Uh, I didn't choose correction. Correction there chose you go. me. You know, I I was willing to work in anything. I was not picky. I said, no, I need to uh, climb out of the the monotony that I was living, you know, living pay, check by paycheck. And, you know, uh, I was my mom. One thing is I saw the changes of my with my mom when I had my accent when I was 15 years old. I mean, that... I hit her so hard, and I felt her pain. I said, no, 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 no. My mom needs to chill out. My mom needs to get a break from, from this yeah. suffering. So I dedicated all my life to take care of my mom. My mom is still alive. She lives upstairs Thank from God. me. I, I own this duplex. My mom is 93 God years old, me. and she's in great shape. And I, I, I will be with her until the end. I'm married. I, I have a family. Uh, married in, uh, back in 1993. So, uh, but uh, I always kept my mom close to me just in case. Just it's something that is right. in my heart. I need to take care of her because what she did for me. And I appreciate yeah. it. So, art was part of my life. All the time. I work in corrections. I, when I was working in pretrial services, there was uh, this man that I'm grateful because I learned so much from him. Um, his name was Sam Samuel Orms. Sam. He was very wow. I, I don't know how to describe right. how to call him. He was, was a character. <laughs> Normal. He was a character. <laughs> Oh, he was a character. So, but I learned all the basics about photography with him. He he told me something that in the future, when I went to college, um, I already knew the basics of photography. So, when the teacher started calling things, I, I knew what she was talking about. So, I, I breezed through college yeah. because of that. Um, life experience, guys, life experience is a lot better than what you teach in college. In college, you get a certificate or a diploma saying, hey, this person went and did this in college. But if you experiment yourself, you learn a lot more than what you learn in college. I can tell you that. So uh, let me not, not, you know, deviate from right. that interview. <laughs> but, um, Correction showed me to start, and I had my my background in programming, so I reinvent myself. And when I was working in Correction, like I say, I met this man, Sam Orms, and he had the first and only 
closed circuit TV station in Correct. a jail. That's it. Nobody else in the, in the world right. has it or had it. And there was different shows. There was a Bible show. There was the public defender mm -hmm. life. And, and, you know, just him talking about sports and boxing. Yeah. And, you know, he may call the studio and, you know, answer, put him on home, you know. We, we kind of screened the email before because uh, some of them, they wanted to say something stupid in the air. So we had a rule not to discuss anything internal like riots and stuff like that or uh, suicides and stuff like that. But some inmates call the, the studio and they leave uh, voicemails uh, saying about what they're feeling, they want to kill themselves and stuff like that. Across from ICTV was a uh, health service, so uh, I was run by a man, uh, Arthur, what's Arthur. his name? Oh, uh, no, Ty uh, Tyrone Williams, uh, wasn't it? Or was it uh, Arthur, Brown? No. Arthur Brown? Arthur Brown. And Arthur Brown, uh, we passed a message to them. He said, look, this guy is calling from from C cell, 5C something, and he wanted to have a problem killing himself. But right away, they tried to transfer him to the ninth floor, which is a health there. They do a health screening there. And, you know, uh, I, I believe that ICTV saved lives sometimes. Even though Sam had a, a, a little problem, uh, he passed away back in uh, 2019. Uh, he was old and he fell. He broke his, um, uh, I think, uh, the hip. And he never recovered from that. He died, passed away. So it, you know, it was sad. But when Sam, uh, was there, he, you know, I, I believe he saved lives, you know. So I learned how to do show live and I was able to screen the calls and I was, uh, your, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, your screen, it was flashing green uh, just a minute yeah. ago. It was something, some of the connections, I, I believe. But anyway, you, you can cut this yeah, part, okay. okay. There you go. It's something doing something weird. Looks good to me, though, on my end. Oh, it's green again. I think it's my. I don't know if it's my uh, my feet. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. So, I have a a lot of fun. Um, believe it or not, uh, when I was working in pretrial services. Uh, I met a lot of friends. Uh, I, I, I met a lot of people, friends that were really, really lazy. He just they came in, they sat, they didn't do anything, but they were funny and <laughs> good enough for uh, government work. Yeah, so uh, back back in Cuba, we will have a word for that. The people who try to hide from work. It's called un guillao. <laughs> So we have some guillao there. Plenty of them. So now, if I, I let, let me put a, a little, go ahead, go a ahead. little, a little bit more p picture to Sam Orms. Uh, Sam, like you said, was way ahead of his his time, and yeah. and he was the first ICTV. That's what it was called television show inside a jail or prison. It was primarily for rehabilitational purposes, but he had it like a show. Like when he did sports, remember the yeah. chicken? He'd come out with a little chicken and boxing and right, all this right. other stuff. Robert and he Tom. had his uh, wardrobe on, the, the lab coat and all that other stuff. And as unfortunate as it sounds, a lot of these inmates that were coming to jail over and over and over again, they would wait for four o'clock to see ICTV. 
Yeah, and, and some of these inmates became trustee and, and they were working at ICTV. Worked in, correct. And they were learning a trade. Yeah. And Sam was more of an educator than anything else. He used that television program to get the word out. And unfortunately, Sam, in my opinion, was way beyond his time that the department never understood what Sam was doing. Even though he did it for many years and they kind of left him alone, they didn't understand how powerful what he was doing. And today they don't have it. Today they don't no. have it. You know, that, and, and that's why I said at the beginning of the podcast is uh, correction became too Correct. political. And it was about themselves, not the inmate. Even though they, they were crooks, man, they, you know, some of them, they were really bad. But some of them, they, they were there because they made mistakes. Right. But it, it was more about administrators than inmates. Yeah. Hold on a second now. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Never mind. They were knocking on, uh, it was for me, but, uh, you know, I, I tell them that I was busy. <laughs> So let's continue. This is more important. Now, tell us, uh, you know, you've, you've taken us through the computer age, the camera age, you're coming from Cuba, learning some of those trades in camera with Sam Orms. And what, now you've transitioned out of working for the government, you're working on your own. What are some of the projects that you're, currently doing oh i i do some uh digital painting basically it's digital painting i have uh i, I think i can i can sit here and show it to you it's uh it's called a tablet and we use this pen to paint on it oh yeah you see how the mouse right. is moving so you get an art art program uh, like Photoshop, uh, Revel. That's what I use, and there's also one called Painters, and you can actually get a picture and do like a um, transparency on top, and you start painting on the transparency with digital paint, which you do like uh, the effect of a. Uh, of acrylic or oil, and then I print it on canvas, and and, and I retouch the canvas with real gel, so it looks it looks like a painting. It's amazing! You look at it; it's, it's like amazing. painting. And I, yeah, back then it was different. Back then you have to print very light the photography and get actually real pain and started going taking your time and now it, it takes me a couple of days to finish one wow. before it took me like a, a week or yeah. more and that's basically that so since i was knowledgeable with computers and computer logic and i had some artistic talents I was mixing the two and this is the age now of computer and computer oh, yeah, sure art is. and you mix it and what you get is, is some incredible uh, stuff so when i retire and more was like photography before but when i really retire i move on to video I was editing wedding before and stuff like that. It was kind of boring. I say no, the cameras now and days have tremendous yeah. quality. So I, I I use a program called DaVinci Resolve to edit all my footage, and I say, yeah, let me let me put it in the internet to see you know on YouTube to see what I get, and hey, 
I seen so many views, people subscribing to my channel, and hey, I don't know, I don't know. I, I also, since I was into computer before I understand how a CNC work, I do some work work, and actually, can you hold down a minute? I'm gonna show you something that I did. Hold on. I think I have it here. Oh, there, there it is. I see it from here. That's wood. This. Wow. That's wood. Yeah. And it's in layers. And I cut that with my laser. I cut that with my laser. Excellent. Look at that. And I do this little thing. The detail. I have a Jewish. I have a Jewish friend, and I created this. Uh, the Star of David. Yeah. Look, look at the, the detail on it. The Star yeah. of David. So I I do a uh, laser engraving. I create the art, and then I digitize the art and transfer it to a laser or a CNC. And I, I do it there. Uh, so I still doing the paintings too. I still doing the painting. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not. I'm right. retired. So bro. you got time. But if if somebody wants to buy something from me, and basically to my friend, I don't charge him. I you know just give him away to my friend. Why? 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 You know. It's like a family, you know. I've known you for 30 yeah. years. You know, how can I charge uh, somebody uh, I know for so long in something that it takes me, you know, I can grab any picture uh, in three or four hours I can make into a painting. Yeah. Why well, I want to charge a friend of mine who I know was there for me in good times, in bad times, especially a correction officer who worked with me, the protecting case of any, you know, bad behavior right. from inmates. You know, if some guy go nuts, like I seen before, down when I was interviewing the real lobby, or when they, they transfer to the second floor to be classified. You were classification for a long time. That's yeah. where I know you from. Um, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I feel... For example, I, I, the other day uh, I was in in Facebook and I saw Sergeant Page uh, posted a picture of uh, his wife, late right. wife, uh, uh, his wedding picture. You know, but the picture was so bad; it looked horrible. And I said, "No, I got to do something here." So I grabbed the picture. I, I clean it up and I send it back to him. Say so this is better, just in case he wants to print it. And it means a lot one. to him. I know that. Uh, yeah, and also I did the same thing with uh, Officer Farina. You know, he posted a picture of his wedding. It, it, it looked crappy, you know. So I fix it and color balance it and send it back to him. You know. I'm not going to charge these guys. I, I knew these guys for so many years. This is like, like my yeah, family. Yeah, I know you uh, You did one uh, of myself and my granddaughter that I'm raising. And you also did one of me and my old partner, Negron. And uh, yeah, it, it was very nice. You know, the pictures, the picture, uh, the one with Negron, it was not, it was not um, that bad. It needed to be a little sharper and, and color balance and stuff like that. You know, um, I remember one. I don't know if you remember. Uh, one day, I had a, a Camaro, a red Camaro. And I was on 27th Avenue, passing 36th Street. I was going to 112 that way. And... Hey, I, I don't know if I have a, a my car stop or a flat tire or something. And you and Negron stop and help me. 
I don't know if you remember uh, that. I, you know, I had. Ne Negro I, was I can barely remember what I had for lunch. But, <laughs> but right, we were the dynamic <laughs> duo. We were always uh, together. I, yeah, and, you know, hey, I remember that. Another, another, the, another time in correction that hit me really hard is uh, when Officer Trudeau yeah. passed away. You know, um, you know, everybody in Croatia had like a like a you know sidekick yeah. or a partner. Um, it was uh, Trudeau and Marrero, right. the Marrero, aka Baby Huey. <laughs> That's what he's called. Yeah, no, that, that, I, I actually, actually, I think that Marrero became like a, a Mickey Mouse cat. Yeah, music. he did move to that area. I think he did. I think he did. It became a, a Mickey Mouse cop. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I remember those two also. But uh, Trudeau, man, Trudeau used to hang around with me. I took Trudeau one day to Club Mystique in the Hilton by the airport. You know, Latin night, Cuban, you know, salsa. And Trudeau had a blast. I mean, I can tell you that. I remember that. It was like, oh, he, he was a good guy. Uh, he we oh, lost he was him awesome, in man. an accident. And uh, it took the department uh, by surprise. He stopped to help somebody. Yeah, yeah that's what that's. What and he got he crushed was. by a car and it, it, it really hurt a lot of people because he was he was an awesome guy. Yeah. And his brother, his yeah, brother yeah. George, just passed away. Not too long. Oh, he did. When did George passed away, I want to say a year ago or something. About a year ago. Oh wow! I didn't know. Yeah, he was. He he was yeah. great too. He, you know, he was always in court service and stuff yeah. like that. But he was he was an impact when he he died. He you know, he had a whole career ahead of him, and he was taken from a lot of people uh, because. Pre Trudeau was everybody's friend. Yeah, you know, he so was. The, you saying that that's that person you bond with, I know you, you bonded with him most likely in information because that was his old office. He was. He, uh, he, he, he was. Yeah. I mean, and he was my protector yeah. there because uh, I'm, I'm sorry to tell, but uh, there was a female officer, the Corporal Seawing. She was not good to mm -hmm. me, man. Even though she was Cuban, she was she was married to uh, an Indian guy, I think. That's why she got the the last mm -hmm. name Seawin. She was not she was not good to me, man. She was like very tense all the time and pulling me to the edge. It was Trudeau who say, "Hey, man." Corporal, you need to back off a little bit. Yeah, so, he was he was a, a breath of fresh air. In an environment that was yeah, very was. tense, Trudeau was that calming person. He was always like that. Yeah, I mean I, I would he'd come in at eleven o'clock, I would be leaving, and sometimes we'd have coffee to bring up you know, with uh, Moreno. They would do coffee. Right. And uh Never, never upset, no anxiety, nothing. In an environment that's full of anxiety, problems, he was always calm. And he was taken from us all of a sudden. So that's, uh, working in that type of setting is not easy. It's not easy. No. And, uh, you did it. I did it. No. Um... And, uh, you know, we're better off today because we work there, because we're level-headed. Level -headed. Absolutely. We've we seen the, what bad people can do. Jeez, it, it, a, a lot of people out there don't know. Well, nowadays they know a little more because of Correct. social media. But back then there was no social media, and you, you, you get to cases of uh, parents raping their kids. Yeah. I, I interview a case like that, and it just blew my mind. It stay with me for yeah, it's a while. Trouble. It's trouble. Uh, people, people who you interview, 
in, in classif downstairs in, in booking and next to know the alarm goes off the guy hang himself yeah. and, and you see that I say, man I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell if the guy was going to do that so you, you feel some right. guilt for not helping but hey you know you learn you, you learn, learn a lot you, you learn, learn a lot, lot. Yeah. And that's something you see that stays with you for the rest of your life. But you grow, man. You become stronger. Uh, you avoid fights, even though I can hold my own on a fight. Yeah. I. But you, you, you are more disciplined right. and engaging with with people. You know, people flip you out on the street because. You cut them off and stuff like that. Hey, it's fine. You know, hey, go ahead. I'm not in a but, hurry. But, uh, you go ahead. You go. Another thing is, back then, we dealt with sheer numbers that don't exist today. An example of that, we used to have, back in 89, 90, 125,000 bookings. Today, if you have 48, yeah. it's a miracle. 48,000. Right. Now, now I'm you know, you, you had them jammed inside cells like sardines. You know, it was a different era. It was rough. It was tough. Uh, today, it's polished. That's probably why it's more political. Right. It, it, exactly. It's too, too, too political. political. For example, there's a, there's a state law set here called Lottery and Proud. Yeah. And they don't enforce it right. anymore. Out the window. You know, hey, you see, uh, you know, a group of men drinking beer in, in a corner street, you know, they selling drugs and stuff like that. And they don't enforce the law. Yeah. They don't. You call the police and say, hey, look, you know, I think there's something suspicious going on. Yeah. Police is yeah. in jail. And I don't, I don't blame the police, you know. I don't blame the police but because they, they told not to, to do right. it. It's, it's a system. But it's a hey, system. Yeah. It is. It, you know, one thing that I applaud the government um, and, and people say, you're an asshole because uh, you are you're senseless. I see bombs sleeping on the sidewalk. And it's the same one, it's the same one, homeless. And as the government signed a law that starting October 1st, uh, those people cannot sleep on the street or they cannot put camps in the sidewalk and stuff like that. I applaud that law. Uh, I got friends who say, you're, you're a son of a bitch, man. You, no. These people are not homeless. They they homeless by choice because they use all the drugs and stuff like that. They don't want no responsibility, and they block in the sidewalk, right. man. All people with the carrying uh, the the rolling car with the groceries cannot pass by because sometimes they all pee on the in themselves, sleeping on the sidewalk. No, th those people need to go to a, either a rehabilitation place or a mental yeah. hospital. They don't belong in the street. Same it is it, it is the depravity uh, of our society. Unfortunately, they've become victims that they don't want to leave being homeless. It's crazy. So today they have Camilla's house. It looks like a, a, a hotel, but they can't stay there. They throw them out in the morning. You know, you got to go work, but they don't work. They don't do anything because they've become no, their own. No, they, don't, they don't. They don't want to engage in in, in society. No, you want to. You want to be homeless. Okay, you move to a place. You sleep in a, in a tent in the middle of the field somewhere, but not blocking right. the street. Right. No. And some of them are able bodies. They can work if they wanted to, right? They can work if they want. Some are mentally ill. Oh, yeah. There's no way for them to go and they wander around. But the able bodies, you know, you make me remember one day I, I was in the walk 
interviewing somebody about pre-trial. This guy must have been 6'5". He, he looked like Shaq yeah. O'Neal. Big, strong. And um, the part I interviewed him and said, uh, do you have a job? He said, no, I don't have a job. I'm disabled. He said, what's your disability? You know, I, I, I needed to ask because this guy, this guy can, you know, I can give him a job carrying me right. everywhere. <laughs> you know? He said, what's your disability? Uh, emotional. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just ridiculous. This guy didn't want to work. Wait, Wong. <laughs> that was the <just> dispel. <laughs> no. <laughs> Emotional disability. I, right. I, Not that it doesn't exist. Whatever. But he didn't appear to have it. No. Yeah. He, he exactly. was gearing up so when he goes to court, he could tell the judge his tearful disability. Yeah. Can they? Can the audience find you anywhere on social media? Um, yeah, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, and my Facebook page is Fidel Gonzalez. Uh, my face is there, you know, with a big mustache and stuff like that. I have a, a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Rolling Raul. One word. Uh, and that's where I post my videos. I, I, I basically post video there. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start doing videos on how I do the painting process. Excellent. You know, every step I take, uh, all the paint I use, all the digital brushes I use, and I'm going to do a, a, a speedy demo of a painting. And I, you know, just little clips here and there. Um, I, I'm, I'm disabled. I, I'm in a wheelchair, but that's not an excuse to not go and explore the world, explore everything. I, I have in mind having a project to do uh, all the national parks in, in, in the United States. Uh, I am doing now state parks here. Did one that is Cape Florida. You know, I'm I'm testing my video editing and storytelling. I'm not fully yet uh, to do a series of it, but I have plan, and that's one of my plans. My one of my plans is uh, visit all the state parks in Florida. And then move on to uh, national parks, uh, starting with the one in Florida, like the, the the Everglades, and moving on to maybe Utah, the, the Wyoming. The sky's the know. limit. Yeah. Have, have exactly. you thought about doing an Instagram page? I do have an Instagram page, but to tell you the truth, I never um, put attention to it. To, to post. I, I know there. it would be a little tricky with the paintings because you would need like permission from the people. Can I post this? Because it's their property right. in essence. But exactly. it would be it would be good. But what I do want to tell you is I want to have you back in the near future, so we can we can Definitely. do a, an update on what you got going on, on YouTube. Okay, uh, I, I I totally agree, man. Uh, you know, I I'm happy to I, see you, man. I haven't I haven't seen you since uh, 2016. I think was the last that's time when I, I retired. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I didn't well, walk out of there. I ran out of there. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. You know, I, I keep in touch with uh, Officer yeah. Mahi. Great guy. Uh, for great, House of Red, he did thirty something years. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I keep, in, uh, I keep, you know, in touch with him. Uh, funny because uh, last year I did a transatlantic uh, cruise from London all the way to Miami. That had different stops, like in Spain and Portugal, 
uh, hey, guess who was in the group? Well, hey, well, look at money. <laughs> I, did he move to uh, Naples? So, did he move to Naples? Yeah, yeah he's uh, he's living in North yeah. Naples. Uh, he, he used to live here by Aventura, and, and he moved over there. He bought a, a house. Uh, it's like a, I think it's a three quarter acres or an acre and a half, yeah. something like that. And he has some chickens there. So when he comes to Miami to see his dad, he brings me, uh, uh, you know, eggs. And all those eggs from those chickens, they come in different colors. Some are brown, some are blue, some are green. It's Easter eggs. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Easter eggs. No, he's a great guy, though. He, so, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I am happy to be in your podcast. And I hope, uh, yeah. We're, we can we do will another do another one. one. We'll keep the audience updated. Oh, since you know a lot about guns and stuff like that, uh, you know, ever since they passed that law, they don't need a, a concealed carry mm-hmm. permit. I always carry one with me. So you have the, you have the right to but, do so. Okay, so but I would like to know. I would like to know, and maybe I can watch one of your podcasts, the procedure not to pull out the gun. Right. Only when you... In, in, if, 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 right. In and it may be a, a threat to your life or you, someone else's. Right. Right. That's... that's I, and that's what I thought. I, I would never, never pull a gun on anybody unless my life is filled with... And threatened. another thing, if I can add... So, if you're carrying a gun, avoid problems because you might have somebody, two people fighting, and then you introduce the gun to the fight. So you want to stay away from exactly. There. Just stay away from there because no, 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 no. you're carrying. I, 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 I'm I'm pretty cool, man. I I don't get an argument with people. Right. I just walk but I'm, away. I'm not referring directly to you, but people because they're carrying, they think they become the police now. Hey, break it up, break it up. Right. And you could be printing, which means they could kind of tell you're wearing a gun. Next thing you know, you brought the gun to the fight. That's, and, that's correct. You know, people can get hurt. So carrying right. a weapon is my, a big my responsibility. Theory, my theory is if you're going to pull a gun, is to yes. use it. Otherwise, keep it right. locked up. And, and when, if you're going to use it, use it well. Yeah, use it well. Exactly. Don't hesitate. Once you've decided, I have to do this, use it well. Right. Yeah, not, not to tell somebody, no, stop no. doing that. And no. here, and here, here, life, somebody here comes is to your you. secret right here, my friend, your wrist. Make sure your wrist doesn't bend, right? So you keep your wrist right. nice and steady. So when the gun goes off, your wrist does not move. You don't want to do this. You That's want to correct. keep that wrist pointed forward so when it shoots, it shoots like this. Why? Because that way the gun won't jam on you. I, I don't know if you remember Officer uh, Rodriguez. Rosa. Yeah. She uh, committed suicide. You know, suicide, yeah. I went to the shooting range with her back in in the 90s, some, and I remember she bought a, a, a 44 banner and she thought she was um, mm-hmm. Dirty Harry and put that gun and that gun, she was not holding it, you know, straight up. That gun went back, back out of tooth, right? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard the story. No, I, well, I was there. Yeah. I was there. Yes. I was there with Officer Santana. Yeah. I remember Santana too. Yeah. Yeah. My friend, it's a pleasure having you here on the podcast. We want to bring you back in about three to six months and keep us updated on your own. Uh, yeah, you 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 got me, right. brother. I'm blessed. God bless you, man. you too, and thanks. You always and have thanks for coming on today. Thank you.